Hello everybody and welcome to this Three Colours Up. In this one we're going to be tackling A Warrior of Rohan for the Lord of the Rings game by Games Workshop. We're going to be doing this with a little bit of a slap chop, slap chop technique. Sorry, apologies, I, my pronunciation is terrible. And um, I've done this because it's more of me taking the technique uh, as portrayed on YouTube by a couple of other uh, video creators. Some really talented guys out there too as well. Ninjon, I watched your video if you're watching this somehow. Uh, thank you for the inspiration to go ahead and try it myself. And um, I don't think my results are quite what Ninjons were, but at the same time, Three Colours Up is all about getting stuff done quick, maybe a little dirty in places and just getting stuff done and out of the way. Uh, I've taken the base techniques and just thrown them together to see what would happen. We're using contrast paints and of course a little, couple of little extra steps afterwards as well. Just if you feel like enhancing the look of the model, uh, even one of the steps I do is maybe a bit of a correctional step just for tonality and coloration a little bit. Not a big deal. All in all, a satisfying miniature to paint. It's a really old sculpt, but it's very charming in its own way. Like the, the old Lord of the Rings stuff has a real charm about it. Less uh, or more sort of hand sculpted feel to it rather than the more modern uh, Lord of the Rings releases where it's definitely been done you know, in 3D CAD. So, yeah. They have a lot of character, these old infantry models, and uh, just a joy to paint, to be honest with you. But without any further ado, let's get down to the table and let's paint it. So to get started on our Warrior of Rohan, we're going to be brush priming this time. We're not going to be using airbrushes or rattle cans because, you know, some people don't have the space or the money for the equipment or, you know, don't really want to push the budget that far. So we're going to be using Green Stuff World Matte Surface Primer Black. So good matte black primer. I'm going to be putting that down onto my little palette over here, which is messy from my last one. So what I'm going to be doing is applying this with a brush that has is, has seen better days, obviously, but has very soft bristles and is quite rounded. So we're doing that just because it's going to let me get into every nook and cranny on the model. And this stuff brushes on real nice. You can go heavy, you can go light, it has a bit of a self-leveling uh, property to it, so you're not going to get uh, a lot of brush strokes and stuff like that over the miniature as you're working, which is absolutely great. And of course, if you don't do it right the first time, you can always just brush on another coat. So we're going to get this guy primed up and see where we need to go next. With our surface priming now done, we're going to be moving on to our first stage uh, of our sort of slap chop move here and we're going to be doing a dry brush all over the entire miniature with Tyrant Skull because this is going to give us a nice warmer sort of dry brush that we can then move up through and into a white dry brush. So on my plate here I've got my Tyrant Skull so I'm just going to prep my brush for that. And we want this to be a fairly heavy dry brush over the entire miniature. Obviously wanting to avoid the paint that's probably still wet on the palette. But let's get on with it and let's see what uh, what we come up with. So again, we want to be quite heavy with this particular colour. With the Tyrant Skull dry brush down and sorted, you can see it looks a little bit messy, but that's all right. I'm not too worried about that. We're going to be doing another dry brush now, and this one is going to be Praxetti White. This is going to be focused mainly on the areas where the light is going to be hitting the model the most. So we're going to be looking at the likes of the top of the head, the top of the arms, the front of the shield, um, down some of the front details on his chest here. Uh, so for example, we want to be focusing up here. down over the face plate of the helmet and down the sides of it up here on the arm I want to carry it down onto the chest and then down at least onto this side of that leather jerkin that he's wearing underneath maybe a little bit onto here as well and just work around the model in areas where the light is going to be a bit more prominent particularly up on the axe as well. We want more white on the axe because we're going to be doing pretty much an entire paint scheme with contrast here. So we're going to be 
pardon me, we're going to be making sure that the axe head doesn't look too weird once we actually start putting some color onto it as well. So just a case of going around and just adding little bits of this white, this Praxetti white, to wherever we think the light's going to be hitting him the most. Uh, particularly again on the shield. And if we play our cards right, we should be able to get away with not having to revisit the two horse heads on the front. We should be able to just get away with doing them or leaving them alone basically and carefully painting around them. We may need another go with that. But we'll continue on with this and see what we get in the end. So with our dry brushing all done, let's have a look around the miniature. I think we can get away with not touching these horse heads again if we're careful. This is me, I may not be careful. And other than that, we've got some interesting texture on the back of his cloak here, which is going to be uh, kind of fun in a minute or two here when we start to apply our first contrast paint. And our first contrast is going to be Creed Camo. Obviously, this is green. It's going to be going on to our cloaks and our shield face. So I have it nicely shaken up. I'm going to take some of it from the top of the pot, spread it around a little bit. This should be as close to the Rohan green without being too vibrant. Um, and hopefully uh, the dry brushing is going to help with that. So let's move on and see what this is going to look like. And again, with Slap Chop, we want to avoid details that are going to be in other colors. So he has a lot of hair spilling down the back here. We want to avoid that. So this is really sort of a, a brush control exercise. I know when you in many of our heads, we just want to take the, the contrast paint, slap it on, and then work with whatever problems arise after that, which is usually my approach, and I get slated for it. So that's fine. So just a matter of applying this down. And that is giving us quite an interesting and quite a quite an accurate color I think as well. I have to admit painting Lord of the Rings stuff can be a little bit like painting historical miniatures. There's a certain color based off the movies anyway that things should be. And if you want to make them screen accurate, particularly for following the movie styles, then you've got to, you've got to do your research. So I think that's close. It's probably not perfect, but it's definitely close. We could always go back and visit it again later with another color just to increase a little bit of, of its vibrancy. And I'm doing this color first because I know surrounding it, apart from his hair, there's a lot of darker materials working on here. So there's a lot of leather work and stuff to come. And uh, that's going to be a little bit more forgiving, putting this color down first and then Obviously a little bit, probably, we'll probably carry it right down and just follow this line. These are old sculpts, so there's a lot of, is that a detail or is that just part of the, the problem of the molding process? But that's fine. Sort of use your best judgment on that. So let's see how tight we can get. Up and it sort of comes over the shoulder here as well. So again, there's hair to avoid. And there's also this male armor here, which we want to avoid the scale mail. I want to avoid that as best we can too. So while that's drying, well, while that's drying, we're going to think about what other colors we want to do. Obviously, we need to do the shield face as well. And um, I think uh, moving on, we're probably going to up the vibrancy of this shield a little bit after seeing what this is doing over here. So we'll probably increase the vibrancy a little bit. But we'll do this carefully. And we'll see what we get. With our Creed camo down, let's have a look at what we've got. So a little bit of staining and pulling there on the shield that I'm not too happy with. 
and uh, on the back I think it looks fine uh, we're going to leave it for now and what I'm going to do is tell you a stop point and then maybe do a couple of extra steps just to um, just to bring out a little bit more detail. So from that, we're going to be moving on to the leather color, or one of the leather colors. And this one is going to be Gore Grunt of Fur. We're going to be applying this mainly to the jerkin and see if there's anything else we want to apply it to. But apart from that, I think it's just going to be to the leather jerkin that he has on, or sort of tabard even, I guess. So again, want to be careful around where this male is and then sort of work it down along the edge of the cloak. Avoid that belt if we can and just carry on. With our Gorgonda fur now dry, we can move on to our next color, which is going to be Saigor Brown. So we're going to be continuing work with our leathers. I'm just going to put some of it out here. Now this is obviously a darker, far darker brown. And what we're going to be using that for is focusing on his boots, this piece of tabard on the inside, and the leather detail on the helmet, because it does, or part of it is at least made of leather. So we'll just go ahead and apply it to his boots. There and there. And then down this, well, no, we'll keep that as it is and we'll tighten it up a bit there. We'll keep that as it is. We'll make that a different color and we'll move up. Uh, we'll have to change brush size here. We have to make our brush a little bit smaller and thin this paint down a little bit. And what we want to do is just put it into the segments of the helmet between some of the banding. Make this part of the helmet nice and dark. With our Saigor Brown dry, we have a look around. And again, I've done a couple of extra bits here, like the bits on his arms and uh, made sure the boots were done right. And I also did his belt in the darker brown as well. So we're going to move on to another color of brown because there's a lot of brown in these. And this one is um, a newer one and I cannot pronounce the name. Gar 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 Gargax sewer. It's a sewer, it's, a, it's, a, it's another brown. <laughs> it's, it's another brown. This one isn't just as heavy as our previous and has a little bit of a tonal shift in it. So I'm going to be using that primarily just in here in this split in the tabard. It's a little bit thinner than the other browns, so it retains a bit more luminosity from the dry brushing work that we did. And, you know, it doesn't look like it makes much of a difference, but I know it's a different uh, tone of brown. We're also going to be using that for the wood on the back of the shield and the wood on the axe. So again, just a case of getting in there, and just giving it a coat of that. The back sides of the shields have such a heavy wood grain, you could almost put nearly any wood texture or wood colored brown onto the back of the shield and it would just look great if it was thinned down a little. But I kind of like the darker browns. They just settle really nice. It's not a detail you necessarily need to have too visible, but it's there. And again, on the axe, Just keep it nice and simple to the top there as well. Again, we might have to just be a little more careful getting towards the hand. And then in just there on the end. And a little bit touch there. Like so. So what we're thinking as well is um, moving on to some different colorations here for the helmet trim and whatnot. I'm not sure if this style of helmet had brass 
on it. I have a feeling it does, so we're going to go with brass. And um, <clears throat> from that, again, sticking with our contrast paints, we're going to move to Nasdreg yellow, and we're going to use that for our brass colours. So a little bit of a shake. Because it's sort of a dirty yellow, it works well as a sort of um, fake... Uh, a sort of a fake yellow or a fake goldy brass color, particularly over this lighter tone here. So, let's just show it off a bit here. It has that sort of interesting looking brass color there. And what we'll do is all the banding on the helmet like this. along the bottom. And because the base brown of the helmet is so dark, we can afford at this stage to go over the lines a little bit. So we're not too worried if those over if this step over oversteps a little. Because it should all turn out fine. Plus this edging on the helmet really does make the miniature pop quite a bit. That. Like so. Then a little bit more for the sides. I can't remember if these were... I think these were metal as well. I don't think they were um, leather. I could be wrong. Or there could just be variations of them. Bit there. And then we'll also do the center of the shield. Again, just to hammer that sort of color difference in a bit. Just around the circular part. Like so. So we're starting to look a bit more Rohan now. We're going to clean our brush off and then we're going to move on to skin. And for skin tone, we're going to be using Dark Oath Flesh. Again, a good, nice, uh, nice good one. It's going to be quite dull in there, so it's going to be quite forgiving for us with the, uh, the older sculpt of the model. Plus this guy also has a mustache and a beard, so he doesn't really have much on, going on on the face. In fact, he has very little going on in the face. So little, in fact, that we're just going to have to just go straight to his hands. Because he's not wearing gloves. Because he's a badass like that. And again, because the browns and other colours around the hand are darker, you can afford to be a little more slapdash with the application of that. And same again on the hand behind the shield. Like so. So we're just going to let that dry before we move on to our next step. So now we have two stages left before I would say this miniature would be tabletop ready. And then after that, we'll do a little bit more uh, just to push things on. So what we're going to be tackling first here is Agaros Dunes. And for that, it's just basically his hair. So dump with my brush a little bit and get some onto my brush. And then as with every other step, it's just a case of carefully applying this to the area. Oh, how much, how much do we need to tell you how to use a brush? It's it's really down to practice and stuff, so don't worry about it. We're just putting the Agros Dunes there because I like this contrast paint as a hair colour. It's just very simple, very quick, and it stands out quite nicely as well. So let's get that in. And then we'll also do his beard. his moustache 
There's not really a lot of skin tone in there, so we can just afford to just go over it. Maybe a little bit heavier on the beard. Something like that. Now, we have one last color, and then we're gonna look at just enhancing the, the overall uh, effect. So for that, we're gonna be using Basilicanum Gray, and we're gonna be using that on the scale meal and the metal parts. So we'll take some of that. Check that out on our palette. And then what we want to do is just apply it to the scale mill. And what that's going to do is darken it down a little bit and make it look a little heavier. With the white highlights from the dry brush basically acting as a metallic or a metal sort of shine. Because we don't have any metallics on this at the minute, it just works quite well. So in there, and on the axe head. Go a little heavier on the axe head if you want. And again, because the colours around that are quite dark, we're not as concerned about going over the lines or spilling it onto other locations on the model. So, essentially, that is our Warrior of Rohan done, to a point where I would say, yes, if I had groups of these all done and ready, that would be tabletop ready. So, we're going to take a quick swish, and when we come back, we'll look at a couple of steps just to enhance uh, the look of them a little bit. So, with our previous work dry, technically now, as I said before, this is our Warrior of Rohan complete. But... <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and just add a few more touches just to tidy the whole effect up a little bit. And we're going to be starting with a little bit of Warp Lightning. This is simply just to increase the vibrancy of our green and pretty much nothing else. I mean, that's, that's what it's there for. It is a green. It will make things more green. So what I want to do is apply it a little bit thinly so that it doesn't just <clears throat> oversaturate the green that we have, because I like the green that we have, I just think it could be more green. So, maybe even a little thinner than that, to be fair. Although I like that as well. But just as thin as possible with a bit of water on the brush, a bit of water in the paint as well. So nothing too drastic here. It's really only going to affect our highlights. So at that, not much really, other than just bringing the vibrancy up. So we'll just really quickly do that. And that gives us a bit more of a poppy color. And that's going to look pretty good. So that already looks a little more solid, a little more interesting. Even compare it to the shield, it's a bit more vibrant. So speaking of the shield, we'll do it on the shield as well. So. Again, very carefully, probably even just around the edges and that top and bottom section. We don't need to get too much into the, the deeper recesses there in and around those horse heads. We just need to get the overall color up a little bit. And that looks a bit more interesting now. So the other thing I want to do is also increase the brown. Our, um, sewer color from earlier the other brown we'll do a little bit of it over the brown the lighter brown and then again we will water that down a touch too because it's quite heavy so i want it to be more of a, a wash and we'll see what that does as well just to dull it a little bit See if we can increase the depth of this brown. Watch out for our pulling. So that'll dull a little bit, not too much though, but it does give us a little bit more depth. 
And then lastly, what I want to do is on the areas where we've put Basilicanum Grey, I want to add a little bit of Vallejo Model Color Oily Steel. This isn't going to be in a big application though. So we're going to be applying it uh, very slightly with a pretty small brush as well. So I'm using a synthetic dry brush here. And what, for example, on the axe head I want to do is just highlight that axe head up a little bit. Give it a bit of a shine, a bit of a metallic shine. But nothing too crazy. And on his, is it a gambeson? I don't know. <laughs> you can tell me in the comments. We want to just swipe the brush very gently across that just to make it have a slight metallic sheen like so. So what we'll do is let all that dry, we'll give it a matte varnish and then we'll have a look at it and wrap our video up. So here we have it with our matte varnish down. We have our warrior of Rohan finished and ready to join his unit on the tabletop. So in general, slap chop technique is very good. Uh, this is probably my first official experience of actually using it um, in the way that it's kind of intended to be. Obviously, a lot of people use inks instead of contrasts, but contrasts are a very useful tool. Uh, and they do a bit more for you. They accentuate the, the initial dry brush stages. So after having watched a couple of YouTube videos on how other people do it, uh, Ninjon in particular, I was watching his video on it and thinking that's very interesting. He, he does a lot of experimentations. I'd highly recommend going and seeing his results because his results are fantastic. Remember, we're always trying to get something ready for the tabletop and <clears throat> what works best on a tabletop gaming perspective, particularly when you see our further out shot here, is what the miniature looks like at distance. We're not too concerned as Ninjon even says in his video, we're not too concerned about the extra little highlights. It's all optional. You can play with it as much as you want, go as deep as you want. But if you're churning out units in an afternoon or in an evening or a couple of units across a weekend just to get models ready for a tournament, contrast and the initial dry brush stages on top of a, a black primer really do enhance your painting uh, enjoyment as well as actually having the reward of having stuff finished in the end. So what I would say here is if you're doing this yourself, don't set your expectations to the level where you think this army is going to look great on display. It will look good as a mass, but when people are judging best painted for armies and stuff like that, they're generally looking a little bit closer. So don't think you're going to go in and do a lot of um, best painted or anything like that. You could, of course, if you're going to go ahead and do a few extra steps, some hard edge highlighting, some blending here and there, playing with different things. Remember, particularly on Three Colors Up, we're all about getting stuff done as fast as possible, as easily as possible. And I think this tutorial really sort of emphasizes that point because we didn't use any airbrush, we didn't use any rattle cans, we just used a brush on, uh, brushed on a surface primer and then just worked from there with just dry brushes and contrasts. So for low effort you're getting miniatures done that have an ability to pop on the table, look good from a distance and as a horde, as a mass, are going to look fantastic. So as always guys thank you so much for watching, I hope this one has been uh, helpful to you. I know this is kind of, I've been doing a bit of sort of throwing my my two cents into the, the or my hat into the ring uh, with a few of these other sort of more trendy techniques and stuff like that at the minute. If it works to increase your output, that is what I'm all about on these tutorials. We want to do stuff fast. We want to do stuff effectively. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care, leave your comments down below, and I will see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.